Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming and sometimes hair so if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not going to see here on YouTube. So obviously like I collect skincare, we know that. This channel is kind of like a skincare enthusiast hobby channel. So I get comments all the time that I love recommending brands and um, certain products I should try. I love it as well, like most of my inspiration comes from is the products you recommend. But there are some that I'm like... I've tried that, I hated it, <laughs> didn't like it. So these are brands that you're just never gonna see on this channel because I'm probably never gonna buy from them ever again. So with each brand, I'm gonna tell you as well my least favorite product and also a good alternative and usually cheaper as well. It seems to be the way it's naturally fallen. And please remember, Disclaimer, disclaimer. Just because I don't like these products or these brands, it doesn't mean they're not good. These are big brands that are big for a reason, have huge followings for a reason. I'm just hoping that this will kind of answer a few of your questions as to why um, I'm probably not gonna review these brands. It doesn't mean I think the brand should burn in hell. These are just brands that unfortunately, most of the products were just a thumbs down rather than a thumbs up. By far the most requested skincare brand for me to review or talk about, and that's Kills. It is a very, very popular brand for a good reason. They got such an amazing selection of skincare and product types, and I was actually a fan um, of their products before. Well, I wasn't a fan. I used some of their products before, but because they were given to me as a birthday present, otherwise I don't think I would have actually physically gone out and bought from the store. But I was never overly impressed with the products. They just never seem to work for me. I never seem to enjoy the like user experience of it. I don't like how the staff wear lab coats. I don't know why that really bothers me. The last product I actually purchased from Kiehl's was the Clearly Corrective Dark Spot Solution, which is basically a serum that supposedly helps with discoloration of the skin, sun damage, dark spots, all that kind of stuff. And for me, I used the whole bottle and for me, it just didn't do anything. I have used a ton of dark spot correcting uh, serums, essences, even moisturizers that have been more effective in like a month than this was in the whole four months I was using it. It contains something they called um, activated C, which by looking at the ingredients is literally just citric acid. And this serum also contains salicylic acid. This did absolutely nothing for me and for 60 pounds, that's an expensive nothing. Very expensive nothing. And I found this with a lot of their products. There are a lot of expensive misses. So bear in mind that this product is targeted at correcting dark spots. Here's what personally has worked for me a lot more than this 60 pound solution. Of course, the ordinary is niacinamide. It's much cheaper at five pounds. It's a product that with daily use, morning and night, I saw a difference within three weeks. The same with the COSRX White Mella 14 Ample. <laughs> I always muddle that up somehow. Buy one or the other, you don't need both. I just have both because I'm obsessed. And if you want the vitamin C aspect of it, it's still cheaper to buy a separate vitamin C and a separate product for dark spots, but a vitamin C will have you covered for the majority of this. So the Claire's freshly juiced vitamin C drops are my go-to vitamin C serum. It's light, gentle, yet really effective, and you can use it on a daily basis without any irritation. I do have to be honest though, I'm always keeping an eye on the Kills website just in case something takes my fancy again. Like, it really is a brand that I I want to like, I want to love it as much as other people do. Um, because I look at their range, I'm like, I would like to own some of that. I just don't want these products sitting unused in my drawers when they're that expensive. Let's talk about Clinique. Another brand I get asked about all the time is Clinique, again, with a cult following almost. I feel like Clinique is super old. I'm pretty sure it's late 60s, early 70s. And in a way, I've always seen it as a brand for older, more mature females. Not that I, I think men and women have to use different products. I don't, you see I use a lot of female targeted products. Um, but for me, growing up, my mum's always, my mum's, my single, my one mum always used this. My friend's mum's used this. The women that worked behind the clinic counters were more mature ladies. And I feel like they always gave off that super um, for women vibe, despite their packaging being quite, unisex. The Clinique girls always have like the wrong shade of foundation on, but that's a, a separate thing. <laughs> like they're bright orange. I do feel like the age of the brand is reflected in their skincare. I feel like for the longest time they didn't come out with anything exciting. That's both in their Clinique and their Clinique for men. 
products as well. I was just never fussed by the brand. They didn't have anything that I felt was innovative or interesting. And there was always a cheaper alternative again. Until more recently, they've actually launched a few interesting products. I think is it Clinique ID? I really want to try where you basically pick, um, it's a moisturizer and you kind of um, customize it. So you pick your base and then like an active ingredient. But I do feel like it's a little bit too late for that for me personally. Again, an expensive product um, and I can just get moisturizers that do the same thing for a lot cheaper probably more effective as well might be an interesting video let me know so it was the last product I used that really was like the last nail in the coffin for me when it comes to Clinique and that was their clarifying lotion number three this is basically a BHA and an AHA um, toner before AHAs and BHAs became very popular they were still in a lot of skincare they were just kind of formulated horribly or kind of like the secret clarifying ingredient but I found the clarifying lotion to be very alcohol heavy very drying pretty much clean and clear with AHA in it. It was just way too harsh my skin and their website says to use it twice daily. If I use that twice daily, my skin would be crusting off and like just falling off. Extremely irritated and with like this horrible like over exfoliated glow. I know the amount of alcohol that still remains in that product and they're kind of out of date advice on skincare just kind of for me adds to the like oldness of this brand like they haven't moved along with the times and more modern skincare advice modern practices i don't know if you're looking for a daily use aha and bha which to be honest i still wouldn't use it twice daily i admit like four times a week max i would opt for the cosrx aha bha clarifying treatment toner it could be a good choice it's actually quite gentle compared to other ahas and bhas and that's because they use pyrus malice water which is basically apple water as a more natural salicylic acid as well as betaine salicite which again i think derives from beetroot is a natural um bha not much like clinical backing behind how effective that is but it's personally a product that i love and do find effective is basically a salicylic acid alternative and citric acid is the AHA. So yeah, a very good daily AHA, BHA, but still not, I wouldn't use it daily. Let's talk about Dermalogica. I've disliked every product I've tried from Dermalogica bar one. Price has been an issue for me here and it's not because I don't think some price, some products deserve the price tag. It's just unfortunately for me, I think I discovered brands like Dermalogica when I was experimenting with Korean skincare, which is for some some reason super affordable yet highly effective so I was looking at these products at like 30 40 pounds a product for ones that are like anything from 5 to 20 and thinking there's no need for me to be buying this super expensive stuff and Dermalogica Clinique Kiehl's it's not like the ordinary where if you do not like the product it's fine because it was only five quid like you can give it to someone else to try or you can just pop it in your drawer for another time whatever with the ordinary you've only wasted probably five pounds which is still a lot but at least it's not the 40 quid that you would have spent on a Dermalogica product. So yeah, I was loving at the time everything from Innisfree, Nature Republic, I'm From, It's Skin. Super effective products that are quarter the price or more of a Dermalogica product. So to be honest, I've just never looked back at Dermalogica and the packaging's boring. I hate the font. <laughs> So I'm gonna do this a little bit different because I wanna talk about the one product I absolutely loved and to be honest, probably would fork out for and that's their daily microfoliant. This is a daily exfoliant. There's something wrong in that sentence. <laughs> Made from rice powder and rice enzymes to help polish and brighten the skin. You do not need to exfoliate daily. I know there's a lot of dermatologists that say you can exfoliate daily. I personally, if I did that, it would just be too harsh on my skin. And I think a lot of other dermatologists would agree. This product reminds me an awful, awful lot of the green tea and enzyme powder by Wish Trend. Exact same thing, but it contains powdered Camellia sinensis, basically a tea plant instead of rice powder. So you're still getting that fine grain that you add some water to, to kind of foam up and use as a gentle exfoliator slash cleansing product. And with this, you really do just need the tiniest amount. A little bit does go a long way. Next up, let's talk about Simple. We're coming right down in the cost now. This is your average, everyday drugstore boots kind of like product. And it's very popular, again, for a reason. A lot of people like it. There's two things I think of when I think of Simple. The face wipes and the kind of fake natural skincare 
image. So everyone used to own simple face wipes. They were the Dyson of face wipes. And it bothered me, me so, so much because people would use these, even when I was like 15, people would use these as their go-to cleanser. And this is because of their adverts. I remember their earlier campaign, I believe it was 2011, 2012, for their facial wipes. It's like this advert of a woman, she's got one fold in half and she's gently rubbing the wipe over her face and her makeup's coming off. Whilst in the background, there's like a flower with like paint going over it. <laughs> it was there to symbolize like, um, makeup on the flower petal and pollution, all that kind of stuff. And this simple face wipe was getting rid of it all. It gave the impression that it were gentle and a great cleanser. And we know face wipes, this isn't the case. It's all eyes considering how hard you do actually have to scrub at your face with a face wipe to remove sunscreen, makeup, anything. And I just remember having an instant dislike for the brand because of this. The other re reason I mentioned is that the brand kind of like, they don't pretend to be all natural, but they're the perfect example of a brand that gives off the impression of being like clean and natural when their products still contain all the ingredients that people want to avoid when they are looking for clean and natural skincare, parabens, fragrance, sulfates. I even think a few of their products have essential oils in like lavender oil, other preservatives, that personally doesn't bother me. That's the thing is their products aren't bad. I was looking at one of their toners. I pretty much really like the ingredients in there. But I, the reason I took an instant disliking to them and I've never um, even wanted to try their products is because of this whole like green, green washing, I guess. No, that's not the right term. I feel like it, it's trying to trick people into thinking they're all natural. And also I think when Simple became very popular, I do see Simple as kind of like a teenage skincare brand. I'm not sure why. Um, it's probably not, but I kind of feel like I grew out of that when I got into Korean skincare. So yeah, I just don't like the whole, you know, we're natural, we're simple shtick. It doesn't work for me. Let me know the brands that you will never repurchase again and why, and the products you think we should all stay clear of. Let's stir some shit in the comments. No, don't. <laughs> Keep it friendly, but that is it for me now, guys. I will see you next time.